Aloha kako, everyone. This is your host, Dr. Spachemin, Dr. Spaceman, Alan Shepard, here with another nerd fight. We are super excited for this battle because we have two big old nerds about to duke it out for this match. And I've got some judges with me to help me out tonight on this nerd fight. All right. So we have our competitors here. We've got uh, Chris Diaz. Mr. Diaz, there he is. Mr. Diaz, how you feeling? You've been out of the ring for a while, but now you're back into the nerd fights. How you feeling? Really good. Well, hello to everybody. Did there be a fun match? My opponent is really good competitive. Did be fun? And let you have fun. Did there be an interesting one? Of course, every time he's in the ring, it's interesting. And of course, this next uh, opponent is uh, no stranger to any of these leagues any of these debates and that is the one the only mr Payne, mr ryan Payne. how are you feeling sir uh you know i'm just you know i'm doing me i mean my track record here in tmg has not been the greatest in all my debates i'm i mean i try i try really hard to get to the top of the ladder but then I'm just not back down. So you know what I just realized? If I can't win in late TV fights, if I can't win in choke slam, the divisions that I want to participate in, I figured, you know what? I'm just going to say F everything and just go with a lazy-esque attitude as I go into nerd fights. I mean, I lost my debut match, so I mean, what's the point of trying anymore? Oh, something we rarely see, Mr. Ryan Payne, Mr. Laissez Fair. He's gonna take it easy. He's gonna relax. But you know, there's a competitor in there ready to fight, ready to duke it out. All right. I guess me and the judges will see. I've got two judges with me here. I've got JB3. He's gonna judge this one with me. How you doing, sir? Ah, uh, beautiful, beautiful. I'm doing as beautiful as your face, man. <laughs> and uh, let me tell you, that's up there. Uh, I'm ready to listen to some debates. Uh, I'm ready to hear the arguments. I want to hear it right here. And, you know, I say this every time, you know, competitors, players, you better bring it. Ooh, now you got to throw down from the judge. He wants his ears whole filled with that nerdy goodness. Okay. We also have the man, the myth, the legend, and probably the nerdiest hat I've seen in a long time, but much respect to it. Mr. <laughs> Mr. Badith, how you doing, sir? Look at that hat. Look at that glorious thing. It, look, look, let's get a little bit of sparkle on there. You know what I mean? Uh, speaking of holes getting filled, I'm really excited to get my ear holes filled as well. Uh, it's been an interesting, what is it, three minutes that we've been live already? And uh, I'm excited to get this thing going. Ryan, I look forward to seeing you debate again. Chris, wonderful to see you. Uh, Alan, if I'm not getting in between anything between you and JB, I agree. You do have a very beautiful face. I'm not, I'm just going to put that out there. But let's go. I'm excited. Let's see what these guys got. Oh, look at these these two fine gentlemen here complimenting me. I really appreciate that, especially Medith. Your beard game is on point. Ooh. I'm trying to catch up. We don't I know if we have it. All right. So we've got our rounds of fights, our rounds of questions. We've got four rounds. And we're going to see who's going to take this home. Of course, each round, we've got a 90-second opener from each one of our competitors here. Then we've got our five-minute debate round. And then they got to wrap it on up with that 60-second goodness. Now, they do have the option, should they choose to add that extension on either their opening or their closing. Just make sure, gentlemen, that you let us know that you're going to use that before you do. All right. And if you decide, you know what, that time is too much. I don't need all this time to break down this this argument. Then let us know that you're going to concede the rest of your time should you do so. All right. If the judges are ready, if the opponents are ready, we shall begin. Ding, ding. All right. Round number one. Question number one comes from the wonderful world of Disney Animated. Disney animated. And your question, the question put before you was, which Disney animated heroine is the best role model for young kids? I got two small kids of my own, one daughter, and I want to know which Disney heroine is she going to look up to? Should she look up to? So we're going to hear from Mr. Payne first. 
All right, Mr. Payne, bring us your answer. Your 90 seconds begins when you begin speaking. I'm just going to cut down to it and say who my pick was. I picked Tiana from The Princess and the Frog, mainly for a couple of reasons. Because when you introduce to Tiana, she is not like, she's pretty much outside of the stereotypical Disney-esque princesses that has been given to us. While every, while you see her exact opposite uh, of the princess that she meets, she's all into the fairy tale romances and how it all ends in happily ever after. And Tiana, unfortunately, well, not unfortunately, but written in a way, she is not. She is more of a more of a common every woman character to where she has aspirations to own a restaurant, to be her own person, to do what she loves. She doesn't believe in somebody, you know, waiting for someone to rescue or sweep her off her feet. And throughout the movie of Princess and the Frog, the moment she is turned into a frog by Prince Naveen, you see... Most situations, you're expecting her to just, you know, uh, mope, whine, and complain until she is rescued. But no, she decides through her own will, through her own fortitude, to push forward, to keep going because she realizes she does not want to be stuck this way. And it's because of her will and determination, she wins over many of the creatures she encounters. She wins over the voodoo priestess who decides to aid her. She wins over Prince Naveen, teaching him that just because you are royalty does not mean you can't work hard in life. And even then, Prince Naveen, even before they're and turned into humans. That is your time, <laughs> sir. Woo! All right. Wow. All right. So we've got the uh, the princess from the princess and the frog. As our as our first answer, all right, Mr. Diaz, your choice. Let us know. Your ninety seconds begins when you start speaking, sir. So when it come to Disney Heaven, uh, who the best role model? Didn't one answer that come to all? She's not a princess. She is chief of the daughter. It Moana. Moana is the daughter of the chief who put her people and her island before her and go on this journey without a man, without doing all, a lot of stuff at home, even went married out from time to time, but she put everything in. When you come to young girl today who dealing with self-doubt, who dealing with, you know, find a place to run, Moana is the perfect one. She deal with self-doubt. She's that failure and move on. She helped encourage others. She's a good role model. She's a good leader. And she does it relying on the cliche of Disney princess to get her way in life. She wanted to find her own path to be her own person. At the same time, uh, helping her people out when they needed the more, especially finding the heart to heating and bring it back. And in the end, Mary was the one to say today. She was. She did a lot at home. Mary helped a little bit in the end, but she is a good one more than one woman today who did with self doubt, who didn't live, find their place to roll. And what she say, how far will I go to find my own place in the world? And I do you can see my point because they would be interesting between both of huh? All right, so he's conceding the rest of the time, bringing us Moana. Okay, the name there means ocean itself in the Hawaiian language, and I'm surrounded by it, even though Moana was not based off Hawaiian culture, based about five different cultures. But that's some facts that we don't need right now. We're talking about who's the best heroine, who's the best role model for these young kids out there. You got five minutes. All right, five minutes, gentlemen. As soon as somebody starts talking, let's hear this back and forth. All right? All right. So, why let's check out the way we both pick great role models. Agreed. You we your pick first, great models. Yeah, you picked your first black princess. I picked my Polynesia princess, even though she technically not princess. She a chief daughter, as she's saying in the movie. But with Tiana... I think my problem with Tiana and the more I reflect on her, the more pop is her development throughout the movie. Yes, she got soft good. She hardworking person. She does all she can on her own. But the moment at the end of the film that kind of destroy what she does, it hurt how she end up getting the restaurant. She used Louise as intimidation against the buyer themselves to get the restaurant. That kind of destroyed her like Harvard pay off in a long time. And you're talking about better role model, I think no. 
if we talk, if we were able to argue all around, Naveen in the movie is a much better role model because he thought out at royalty, he tells it, he not that good, and then Tiana bring out the bat and realize that he sacrificed his royalty for love, and I think that is a much better role model. Moana, the not let, uh, let, me, let me counter that point when you talk yeah. about her wanting to use a uh, to you know intimidate Naveen to get the restaurant. The thing is that's that's one I way you can about the buyers, not Naveen. I talk about the buyer at the very end of the movie sure. when she ended up getting the restaurant. Love, yeah, love, love, well, at the end, they certainly give it. Okay, no, I, I can understand your point value, but at that same time, it is still a small grab. So it doesn't really destroy her character. It's more because you see her in the beginning. Yes, her hard working is what drives her, and it also can be seen as a weakness. And I can see that very relatable to most young kids today, to so where they're so head focused, they're, they're headstrong in their mindset on wanting to achieve but something. It's it not hard. until they have to realize they got to step back. Sure, they may have to take a few, uh, maybe they may have to take a decision they don't like. And honestly, it does paint, a, it might be a mark there. But the thing with Tiana is she doesn't let that try to corrupt her. She actually tries to take something like that and realize, okay, I may have not gotten the restaurant the way I wanted to, but at the same time, she just went through nearly losing her soul to a voodoo witch doctor. She was spent most of her life as a, she spent most of the night, a couple of days as a frog while everyone else around her were enjoying I think that life. kind of like, how to, when, Compared to Moana, I think Moana is like, hey, she does not have a romantic love interest. She does what she can for her people, for her own kind. Tiana does vocally spoken of Danny Vajmon that her, that her father wanted in real life. Moana yeah. care about yeah. her people. She put her people needs before her own at the same time, dealing with self-doubt. But any go today Our is two characters different. are separated through two different types of societies and two different time periods. So the, the difference of Moana putting people, let's just say if Tiana was in those same situations as Moana it. was, you're, you're going to say that Tiana would not put people's uh, uh, people's needs before her own? I mean, you clearly see with the creatures that she uh, makes friends with, the crocodile, the, the firefly, the, the, the lightning ball, with the, the snake. She still focused on the restaurant. She, like, when Naveen offered to kiss Charlotte, she like she more more happy about Naveen offering to use his royalty for the bachelor that love at first. It wasn't until later on it kind of lost the point. Johnny is, is a really good role model, don't make me wrong, but Moana does so much. Like okay, you know, let's talk thing, about one thing that you talk about Moana every, has a great idea uh, has a has this uh idealistic role model of someone trying to find her place in the world. I'm sorry, but I can compare Moana to a few other princess uh, Disney characters, no, like no, no, no. Pocahontas. Did Pocahontas was in her story decided to put the one to put her people's uh, needs before her own by wanting to help with John to help John understand her people. Sure, they fell in love, yes, but still at the same time, she was willing to sacrifice a lot just to maintain a peace between the English and the Native Americans. And then I can take okay, the same. Let me also point out that Moana also. And you talk about young girl today. One thing that young girl deal today is self doubt. Moana deal a lot with self doubt. She doubt herself throughout the movie, but she at that failure and move on. She in the end saved the day. Mary held out mm -hmm. a little bit, but she saved the day. Brought the heart that she did. Did it use violence? She used her knowledge. She used her gold to understanding the people, especially the, voodoo, the volcano monster, and realizing that it touched the itself, putting her heart back in, and that to bring peace. She. Mm -hmm. Love her people. She even like in the beginning of the film, she helped them out with tech every day, like pointing out what to do. Like when when she realized that food fresh was coming and that there were new for that she like, you know, right go out there. Like and yes, she opened to her by right, looking at her tattoo. Like there a lot she does that people to look up to. And that's right, that 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 your your difference with time, society. gentlemen. That is your time. Woo! Oh man. They weren't lying. They said they were going to get heated. It got a little bit of heated. Back and forth, back and forth. We're going to need these uh, these 60 seconds to, to get some clarity here. All right. Since we started with Ryan, we're going to go with Chris for your 60 seconds first. All right. And your 60 seconds begins when you start speaking. Okay. The question, who the best role model of uh, uh, Disney having? Moana is the best role model. She not printed. She encourages people with marriage. She look at their family at thing. At what do people go, especially today, deal with self doubt? 
down to yourself, find your place in the world. Moana did what shout out and shout the movie, and and I am a Moana. She say, I am a Moana. I am the people. I am the people that I look forward to. And that what you look into. Someone you should relate to. That you to look up to. Moana is the pure example of what made a good Moana. One who is a good leader. One who deal with failure, accept it. One who to encourage me to be better than to encourage Mally to be better, to help her in several ways. She, she also does so many amazing things. She brought the heart to Chidi by herself, like against all odds. And she also, in the end, established herself as a cheap daughter, but at the same time, made her own way to become your way finder. And I think, like, in today's society, we're going to to And time, sir. All right. All right, we heard all of Moana's case. Now we got to hear Tiana over with Mr. Payne. Mr. Payne, your 60 seconds starts when you do. Tiana herself is definitely not a princess. She is someone who came born into royalty. And despite the way she got her restaurant was through a means of royalty, you take a look at the time period she is in. It is like in the <clears throat> period of time in, in New Orleans to where someone like her, a woman who is very, a, a common everyday woman, has to do whatever she can to strive to get a, make to get above water. She is a role model because like today with most young boys and girls, especially, they have to do what they can to keep their head above water. And sure, at the end, Tiana gets like a nice bow, but that does not undercut everything. She has to work hard because without her being a fantastic cook, she never would have been no recognized by her friend who's a princess to get hired at that job that leads her onto this track to where she gets to there. And at the same time, it is her strength of will, her self-determination that wins over everyone she meets as a frog. And she also, through her own tricks, was able to actually save the day as well by being able to smash that locket from Dr. Fasanelli. And, and she also changed And <clears throat> that is your time, sir. All right. Whew. We've heard two uh, very interesting cases. Fostelli about... is the villain name, not Fostelli. <laughs> Chris, it's whatever. That's all right. It's That's whatever, all right. Chris. It's whatever, okay? Here we go. All right, all right. You two had your say. Now it's time for the judging. Let the judging begin. All right, uh, Madith, you heard the same stuff I do, but maybe you filtered it a little bit differently to that Aquaman helmet. All right. Let's uh, <laughs> let's get some uh, insight on you, sir. Who's gonna get your point and why? All aboard, baby. Uh, I think for me this was tough. Uh, you guys both brought up really good arguments about why uh, each character, not princess, is a really good role model. And honestly, it's the smallest of things that set me aside. It was just the fact that Chris was able to knock on uh, Tiana, whether I agreed with those points or not. But he was still able to like knock her down a couple pegs. Whereas Ryan, you kind of more focused on boosting up Tiana, and you didn't really have a lot to say negatively about Moana's character. Uh, and, I mean, it's not the choice I would have gone into thinking, but uh, my point goes to Chris, just because there was that little bit of a knockdown that, Ryan, uh, you, you weren't able to match that. You weren't able to bring down why Moana was not as good a role model for me. All right, so we got our first point. Going there, okay. Um, JB3, you heard these arguments. What say yeah. you? Who's going to get your point and why? Yeah, uh, like Madi said, it was close. This was really, 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 really close. Uh, both answers had so many good things. And uh, I felt the same way uh, that Madi did about the very tiny detail of uh, Chris being able to, to knock down uh, Tiana more than than Ryan could, and Ryan said something uh, that kind of that kind of balanced his out with everyone else. Um, he said that you know Chris was saying you know all the great things that Moana did, and then uh, Ryan said, "Well, will many people do that?" He was talking about other people. That includes his pick. So for me, with that balance, and then that tiny little knock, like Medi said, I had to give my point to Chris. Mm -hmm. All right, so with that, Chris officially gets this point, wins this round. Uh, I'll give my two cents, even though I know it don't mean much, but I am the third judge. Uh, I actually was going to go the other way. I like the fact that Ryan reminded me a whole lot 
of uh, of Tiana and a lot of her attributes and a lot of good things that she did. And with I think with that saying, a lot of good people do a lot of good things. But this is why Tiana was a little bit better, a little bit higher up, and a little bit more of a role model position that she should have been, um, that she is or could be to young women. Um, so I like that a little bit. So I would have given my point to Ryan, but that don't matter. We're on to round two, question number two. And we're going to go to the world of Doctor Who. Now, Doctor Who, this, this is a whole fandom geekdom that I, myself, biggest geek I know, can't even get into. There's so much convoluted craziness going on in the world of Doctor Who. So I need something to bring it down, to focus it just a little bit. Because we got multiple seasons. We got episodes in the 60s. We got current stuff, all kinds of crazy things. I don't understand what the trash cans, the evil trash cans are. So I need a big budget film to help me out. Break it down simply because I'm one of those idiots that can't see all these Doctor Who things going on. So very simple question to these gentlemen right here. Which doctor deserves that big budget Hollywood remake movie? And what's the storyline? What is the storyline that's going to be told in this big budget Hollywood remake of this particular doctor? Which doctor is it? What's that big budget storyline going to be? And since we started with Ryan, the last round, we're going to start with Chris. All right. So, Mr. Diaz, pitch me. Pitch me this Doctor Who film. All right. Your time begins when you start talking. Okay. When we come to Doctor Who, we think of the Doctor. We think of Companion. We think of the Creature. We think of the Weapon. We think of everything. The Blue Bot that he can put to time. So I thought of the Red Doctor with the Tenth Doctor, played by David Tennant, one of my favorite British actors of all time. And the creature they be the repeating the one of the most creepiest thing ever that you see as they touch you to trample back in time. But I don't have it directed by James Wan himself, one of the best directors in terms of horror and everything. And I don't have it around where what it David Tennant at that tenth doctor, he didn't leave a case and he went into encountered Reaping Angel with his companion. I don't change it differently. I don't put roles for this. And he get transported back to the future. And at the same time, he figured out how to get back to Dr. Reaping Angel. He's also dealing with the dollar. He's dealing with the cyber ball. He's dealing with the master. Suddenly come back, played by Matt Mickelson, one of the best villain actors out there. And he had to work together with the companion world and along with to pie to pie a lot of the other doctors. So this to bring back together Peter Capaldi, this to bring back Matt Smith to fix the future, stop the match of taking over with his army of the Reaping Angel, the Cyberboy, the Dalek, every creature ever, and it did be epic with Jane Ron used the way he used with Archman, the way he used with the Annabelle movie, the Convent, and turning together the epic ball of what Doctor Who need. All right, and that's your time. That's your time. Okay. So just to be clear, the Daleks are the tra crazy trash can look at things. All right, just wanted to make that clear. All right, excellent. Okay, Mr. Payne, now it's your turn. Pitch me that big budget remake. All right, your time begins when you do. To be honest with Doctor Who, we could pick and choose anything and any episode to create into a big budget of Hollywood. But one thing I wanted to do was take an, a moment of the Doctor's life and really try to explore it, do a character study on the Doctor. One thing that the TV shows always try and fail to do, which is why I picked the ninth Doctor, Chris Eccleston. And my storyline is that this is Chris Eccleston just after he had regenerated from John Hurt, the war doctor from the 50th anniversary. And we get with him a year or two years after removing from the time war. And this can be treated like a Western or like a war movie. Like the moment a soldier returns home and they realize that, or at least in the doctor's case, his home is gone. He has to spend a year or two realizing the consequences of his actions, destroying his people. He has to live with the guilt. How can he adjust to that? How is it going to bounce his anger? Is it going to bounce his guilt? Is he going to just run away? And the best director I thought that can do this big budget remake is James Mangold. As we've seen in movies like 310 to Yuma and in Logan, he can take someone who is a damaged person and you can see exactly how their decisions affect their lives going through either they're alcoholics or they just choose to be shut 
ends. It is because of these directions with the doctor, we can find some great character stories and what propels him to finally come back into when we introduced him in the pilot of the of series one. That's my time. All right, you can see a little bit of time. Interesting choice. I like that this goes the opposite way, the other way. We've got a kind of a Logan-esque versus uh, Mr. Diaz's Rise of Skywalker kind of thing. Um, I like this. Okay, so this will be interesting. I am looking forward to hearing what you all got to say about the other's choice in your five minutes. All right, so that five minutes is going to begin as soon as the first person starts speaking. So, Maya, let me get out of the way your biggest thing. And I looked this up to make sure this was true. Christopher Edgerton does not want to come back to be the dot. He said that because this people, is, this is, because this is, Andrew this is, this had a press treat to him. And Chris, the fact that he didn't want to come back for the time of the doctor is saying a lot. And Chris, this is different. Chris, hold on. This is different. Let me speak here, Chris. Yeah. There's a difference between a TV series and a movie. And yeah. at the same time, we're just pitching here. And with Chris Eccleston, yes, he was sore. But the fact is, he did make a slight cameo appearance in Time of the Doctor. You didn't see it there. But if he was convinced to do just a slight small cameo, what would not stop the BBC or at least a director like James Manigold to entice him to come into this project here where it is a character story? And Chris Eccleston, as an actor, some of his best stuff is done about character studies. Now, well, let's talk at the about- At time, when somebody, especially if it's you, you want a movie to do well, you need a companion. You need a good villain. You need creatures that up to go again. The problem with the ninth doctor, and I think- what would draw people back is that he regretting the time war. He dealing with guilt and such, and that doesn't make interesting story. But my story involve everything Doctor Who have the creature, the villain, the magic. It doesn't make an interesting story. You want to talk about yeah. David Tennant? David Tennant throughout his entire run has been nothing but felt guilty of the time war to where he has used that as but a bad like the He has used the time war to pretty much to, to say, I'm not going to let people do exactly what happened to my people. I'm not going to let another genocide happen. Even in the 50th anniversary, Matt Smith and David Tennant pretty much said, we're not going to let another genocide happen because of what happened in the time war. And if you're going to tell me that doesn't work, then I'm sorry, then you clearly right. have lost sight of some of the best Doctor Who episodes. Yeah, but you also need a creature. You need a villain for Twitch everything go. I hear nothing of that. With mine, with the weeping angel, with the master, with the dollar, with the cyber, everything creature imaginable. It is what makes Doctor Who good. You see all the weeping angels. You see the creepy faces. You see all the master. Right? And I picked Matt Mickelson because timeline, whatever, it, like Matt Mickelson is a really good villain and seeing Hannibal. And you create someone like right, Game One who you. Even with the biggest quality of small budget, make something effective. With when you think it's small, with small budgets, he does a great job with small budgets. And yeah, you know, I mean, awesome man, like the, budget. Budget. Yeah. the episode you picked, Blink. The yeah. Doctor is only in five percent of that episode. The mold. The episode is about Sally Sparrow and her encounter with the Weeping Angel. The Doctor picked. But we also. If you're going to remake that, I'm sorry, but the thing is, is that if you're going to focus more on the Doctor fighting these creatures, Blink worked as an episode because the Doctor was not there. It is because you see from the first perspective of nat regular people having to deal with supernatural threats. And if you're going and then your big budget remake is pretty much doing the 180 of that. You're putting more <laughs> supernatural threats involved instead of focusing on the small horror, which if your pick of James Wan is also another contradiction because James Wan does great when it comes to small and uh, when it comes to the regular people dealing with the supernatural. So your 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 pitch and everything is a big contradiction. But I also think with your pick, and I love Jane Mango, but with that some first virtue for I and free time of humor, he does just hit the landing with the third ad. You need a good third ad in a Doctor Who movie. When you look at Logan, I love Logan. The the clone Wolverine stuff and not the greatest. I love I the re Wolverine is okay, but the silver silver samurai is not greatest. Put in the mango hand. You not to give a, a great to that beside one emotional payoff. It like and you haven't yet to pick me what your what your creature, what the villain, what is the no, doctor. I said this is a 
doctor story. This this doctor, the doctor works. The, some of the best doctor stories are character studies, like with Time of the Doctor, like with uh, Dalek itself. Sure, the Dalek is the main focus, but it's all about how the doctor. You want to draw the fan or, in at the palm yeah, of your film. That's the point of the doctor. You have the doctor. He can. He doesn't need a companion. David Tennant's one-off stories that he did before he regenerated. The next Doctor, Waters of Mars. Uh, late the 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 lady. Sure, there was creatures involved, but everything but was a to make a big, journey. With Chris Eccleston, when you want to make a great big, with big, character big, journeys. Stop okay, the film movie. And you want to draw a fan in. Your movie is a good standalone sequel movie than a regular movie. You want to draw a fan in with a uh, name like anyone. You want the Dalek. You want the Master. You want to repaint. You want to start to draw people in that love Doctor Who. David Tennant era was in the 50th anniversary, and it was a gentleman. Was a huge that's mess. your time. time. That's your time. Woo. All right. One thing I do love about Doctor Who is the fandom. They be loving some Doctor Who. All right. Woo. That was nice. That was heated. We learned a lot more, at least I did, about Doctor Who. So uh, let's have these uh, cases closed up here. And since we started with uh, Chris, we're going to go to Ryan for your closing, sir. Okay, wrap up your case. Pitch me this final thing here. And your time starts when you do. Doctor Who as a TV show has always dealt with low budgets and sometimes the ridiculousness of the monsters involved. James Mangold can do a great job with low budgets. The one thing he does great with Logan, sure, you want to argue about the Wolverine's third act. The thing was, what from the first two acts of the Wolverine and with the movie Logan, he talks about a story of a character who has been broken apart. And that's why the Doctor, a year or two out of the time war, is a best example to set a story. While it fits within the Doctor Who narrative, at the same time, it doesn't have to play placate to the audience. The reason why David Tennant's later run and most of Matt Smith's run failed on most occasions is because it spent too much time placating to the fans. Because if you look back at the first, at Christopher Eccleston, it gave you episodes you didn't need, that you didn't know you wanted, like Dalek, like Rose, like uh, the like the final two episodes. It gives you something to where you want to understand the character of the Doctor. Why this 900-year-old alien is so broken apart. And the fact that time were itself, what about the and time? time. That's your time. Mm. Whew. All right. Okay. Mr. Diaz, your turn. Wrap up this case. Okay. I'm Final gonna, pitch for I'm yours. Gonna, before I do this, um, what, explain the question to me one more time because I want to make sure I heard this correctly. Explain the question one more time? Yeah. All right. The question one more time is which doctor deserves that big budget Hollywood remake and what is the storyline? Okay. All right. So. Ryan suggests a standalone spin-off movie. I suggesting the big budget, the big fight, the big showdown we all look at Doctor. Bobby Ryan, Pitch Vagin did not want to come back. He said on many occasions that he wanted to pass. So without the ninth doctor movie would work. When you see a Doctor Who, you see a monster, you see a the robot, you see a uh, the screwdriver, you see a his companion, you see a the doctor itself. David Tennant is the best doctor there is. And with the weepy angel, the creepiest creature, with a guy like Dane Bond who know how to get delivered. A good, good app written native for Doctor Who, where Epic Ball, like you see Ackman, and everything that made Doctor Who good. You get the story, you get the David Tennant guilt companion, but at the same time, his epic creepiness, everything the water Mars, everything when he's dealing with the Queen Ratnet and the Don and the Master episode, uh, the Runaway Bride. Like he had the darkness, and with a villain like Matt Mickelson, who has seen time and time before, that delivered good performance to get the Doctor Who rabbit. Right and we get a fall, we get massive. And massive that's doctors. your time. That's your time, Mr. Diaz. All right. Whew. Man. Okay. I love funny about Dr. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly. All right. No, I, um, whatever. You know, nothing matters in the end. <laughs> nothing matters in the end. Okay. <laughs> we'll see about that. All right. We're going to start with JB3. JB3, who's going to get your point? You've heard the cases. And tell us why. Well, before that, I want to say it's not it. It doesn't matter in the end. It's in the end. It doesn't even matter. 
I tried so hard, but I got so far. Yes. Uh, no, that was a another good debate from both guys. Uh, Ryan really brought the heat uh, with a lot of his uh, facts and a lot of his reasonings. Uh, the one thing that really like sealed the deal for me is uh, Ryan's rebuttal to the actor does not want to do it. And Ryan said, well, you know, that's TV. There's a difference with the movie. That, that, that really, really turned the table for me. Uh, and then he just continued on with uh, just all the things that he was talking about with the broken character and being growth and the proven fact that, that um, you know, that can, you know, that that's the reason why it could be successful. And, you know, the proven track record, uh, Chris did bring some good points, but I thought Ryan just brought that little bit more. And with that rebuttal, he sealed the deal. So my point went to Ryan. All right. So the first point goes to Ryan and I'm going to jump on in with mine uh, so that it'll count this time. Um, I'm going to exactly echo exactly what JB3 just said. Um, yeah, Ryan really, really made a, he painted a picture. He painted a picture of something that I would want to see in the theater, especially if I didn't know a whole lot about what this was. I think Diaz did the same thing. I think Chris painted a, a nice picture of it, but I think he painted a picture of what the fans were used to, what the fans wanted, what you expected in that. Um, and not saying that you couldn't get that in Ryan's, but I think having that more introspective um, um, about what this character and what those adventures does to somebody like that, uh, to something like that, if he is an alien, um, what that does to him, I think would be really, really interesting and compelling uh, to watch. So, um, I'm going to give my point to Ryan as well. All right. Maybe. Medi. Uh, you heard it, Medi. What did you think? Who was going to get your point, sir? First Ooh. off, evil trash cans, Alan. <laughs> Seriously, man. I got, hang on. I don't know if you guys can even see this as well. I got the TARDIS as my goddamn bedside lamp. Like, this evil trash cans broke through my soul. <laughs> and hurt me physically. All right. Now I, I know, I know that you're you 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 the king of nerds in this arena. I'm not gonna take that away from you. But come on, man, that's that's harsh. All right, I, I've settled myself now. I'm done. All right. Uh, I agree with what you guys said. Uh, I definitely thought that Ryan had the better pitch, and for me, I didn't really. Now, maybe this is just where I was coming from when I read the question, or when I heard the question, rather. But when they said make a, a movie about one of the doctors and give a storyline, and you guys said former doctors, so you guys, Christopher Eccleston and David Tennant, both of those guys are a lot older now than they were when they were on the show. So I figured it would be that they made the movie when they were uh, participating on the show. Uh, so I didn't really take into the, the – and uh, I didn't take into the – he didn't want to be a part of the show or all that stuff because that was a lot of behind-the-scenes stuff or whatever. whatever. But yeah, I gave it to Ryan, and also it just sounded a lot less busy uh, in mm. Ryan's movie than Chris's did. So Chris' movie, like, listen, I'm a fan. I've been a fan for decades, but if it was my brother coming with me to watch it, who's not as much of a fan, he, he'd be confused as hell. But if you show him the Chris Eccleston story, that brings in new fans. And it's not just about the fans that we have currently. It's about making sure that we see to the wider audience when it comes to movies and stuff like that. So I went with uh, Ryan as well on that one. All right. So, Ryan, clean sweep on that one. And Medea, I'm, I'm sorry, man. It's, it's easy. It's evil trash cans. It's just, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to have it, man. Come on. <laughs> hey, I mean, I got, uh, you know, I collect Godzilla figures. So, I mean, come on. Do I get a little Let's bit of credit here? I'll give you credit for all the stuff that you were part of. There we go. There we but go. There's an entire subcontinent of people who are like, did this motherfucker just say that? <laughs> that was the greatest statement ever. <laughs> subcontinent of people. Every English person just said, fuck Dr. Spachemin. Yes, they did. Up. Yes, they did. It won't be the first time and it won't be the last. Uh, lost right. All over again. Okay, I just broke a lot of hearts, but that's all right. I saved myself from a lot of bad teeth. 
Oh, no, I didn't say that. Oh, oh. oh. oh we're going to war again. We're going to war again. <laughs> All right, you know, let's bring it back. I haven't seen Hamilton here. yet, but I think we won that war. I'm not sure. That's right. I need hey, to get myself I'll admit, beer. Beer. If yeah. I ever had to be in a musical, I want to play oh, King George. <laughs> okay, now let's go back to some uh, British people who haven't wanted to set me on fire yet. Um, we're going to go to the Wizarding World. <laughs> we're going to go to the Wizarding World. The world we all love, Harry Potter and uh, those other movies. But uh, the Wizarding World is something that a lot of nerds, a lot of geeks hold sacred. Hold sacred. Something I do hold sacred. I do know a little bit about this. I'm a fan of all the books, fan of all the films. Well, some of the films. But I'm interested because I love the world of magic and I love this world. I'm interested in these magical items. All these items, these amazing things that these these characters get to play with and get to have. But I want to know where our third question is, what magical item do you want to have in your life? And why is that one the best? So what magical item do you want to have to use in your life and why is it the best? All right. We started with Chris. We're going to start back with Ryan. Ryan, your uh, 90 seconds begins as soon as you start talking, sir. The best thing that we all know about Harry Potter is that it's a world that we all wish we could live in at times, despite the reality we currently live in. But if I had to take an item from that world that I would like to bring into my life or real life in general, I would pick the Time Turner. And the, to the Time Turner, which was introduced to us in The Prisoner of Azkaban. And, it, for, it, it, and the Time Turner was a, great ex it was a great answer to why Hermione was always getting to all of her classes throughout the movie, even though she was not there in the previous scene. How I would bring the Time Turner in, I would bring the Time Turner with its own because the thing with the time turn, I would like to establish its own set of rules, its limitations. So instead of it having been unlimited amount of magic to, uh, to manipulate with time, no, there's a guideline you need to follow with it. Uh, how many times can you use it? Can you go back a couple of days? Can you go back months? No, we're going to restrict it to where you can only go back to maybe five days minimum. The five days, the maximum. That way, you have to start really evaluating the time you have, what you want to do with your time. And also, especially considering our real-life occurrences, Let's say you want to learn some skills or you want to be able to learn multiple languages, but you realize that you're never going to have that much time. But now with this whole quarantine situation, or if you have a job during this whole quarantine, guess what? You have a time turner that you can take back a couple of days and learn some more on Spanish, brush up on your Italian, or, you know, start studying history, you know, or maybe, you know, just maybe you feel like you want to read as many books as you want in your life. All in my time. And right on time it is. Excellent. Speaking of time, wow, interesting. Gave himself a limitation with the magical item. I like this. Interesting. I don't think we've ever had a competitor do that before. All right, Mr. Diaz, we've heard Mr. Ryan's. Now, uh, what say you? Your time begins when you do. Okay, I love Harry Potter. Everybody knows this. I'm a huge Harry Potter fan. I grew up. I went with the invisibility. Invisibility cloak would make you invisible to anything, any object, any person, to anything, and it used it for you to make up your girlfriend, you to sneak out into all the way to movie invisibility cloak. You to be alone in invisibility cloak reading a book without being dropped at all. There are a lot of things that would make it fun to use, and it less dangerous. It make you feel comfortable. You to feel like a one blanket around your shoulder, and you to have fun. You to ride a carnival ride with the invisibility cloak. On the first field with nobody interrupting you, you to do a lot of things, and it's great use to make out with your girlfriend. And you just sneak into the right library, bringing out books written visibly called I've Been Caught, I'll read a movie, I've Been Caught, from life for a Bop Bop's Bop Bop video. Like so many stuff. And I think that what makes it you. I don't can see my time because we do get into a lot of logistical issue with my other opponent pick. <laughs> All right, and he can see the rest of his time. And picking the invisibility cloak. All right, we've heard the items. Now we got to hear why they're the best when we uh, get into our battle round, which will be a five solid minutes. All right, gentlemen, as soon as the first person starts talking, you're battling. Uh, okay, Ryan, I'm going to stay. This is not fight. This is not movie battleground. I'm going to bring up 
a play from the Harry Potter thing that we to use book and play around. Just got a child. Let's see. What happened with the time turner? It caused such a tragedy to lose the tournament and then kill Neville, causing the whole second war to happen. It caused Delphine to go back kind of, and drop Drake up, Scorpion and Albert in the day of when Lily and Jane got killed. It done a bunch of damage. Even in the five minute, you limitate the damage to be caught. You just caused the next Hitler to happen for heaven's sake. And you leave it I, in one I, hand. That yeah. is all those points you brought is the reason why I put a limitation on the time. But still, and, they, <laughs> and they said, let me refrain from the plate. They say the same. Even in five minutes, to still cause damage. And seen when Scorpio and Albert go back in time to save Cedric from being killed by Voldemort himself. They caused Neville to be killed. They caused Harry to lose the second one. It's the damn it, and it unhealthy, Hermione. That is why I said five days because it depends. Because it's like Ew. I said in my intro, five it's about to how you to The moment you were giving that time turner, guess what? It, 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 the, 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 the moment when I said with the time turner, the moment it's placed in your hand, guess what? The limitation is there. I mean, you can go back five days in your past. Yeah, that but it's unhealthy. History. It's mine. It's just fun. You I, could do a lot of things with visibly close. And it will cause damage, permanent damage to it happen. Won't cause damage? The invisibility goes. Uh, if the invisibility, just like with the time but turner, you're you, argue, no, okay, you made arguments about why the time turner is dangerous <laughs> in the wrong hands. I can give you so many examples of how the invisibility cloak can be put in the wrong hands. Let's say, uh, for some, let's just say for heaven bid, a teenager who knows nothing gets his hands on the invisibility cloak, knows he can start messing with people. Yeah, he'll do the things that you suggested. Go see an R-rated movie. You know, maybe he'll even do things worse that goes through his depravable mind, or he'll okay, get vengeance. Okay, with the time turner. It was called, like, if people get upset with the time turner, it's called the losing mind. You see your to happen. Past. You see yourself in the past. That's the thing with the yeah, time. Yeah, but if you want the butterfly effect, mine the not only has limitations. It's, it's a te it's literally teaching you exactly. You have to it's, learn. It, it's pretty if much. If you wanted to get other stuff, it could cause rage of a damage to the time. You know that. Oh my god, that was done with your turn. The invisibility was, the and remind Harry not to run into them and put their antibiotic. And you look at the damage it's done to money and put the antibiotic for she. Couldn't sleep at times. She was busy study. She couldn't enjoy life, but what is that? She and I'm giving it up willingly so she could go back to a normal life. And you see what the damage done in a cut child. That's, yes, why I, that's why I was about the movies. See, the, in the movies, the time turner was introduced. But to it's us. a nerd and fight. It's not movie really bad again. We should use the. Hey, stuff. Chris, Chris, can I can I my time here? You will have your time. Yeah. Trust me, you will. As I, that's why I was talking about the movies. And yes, you are bringing a lot from the books. I know the books. Hermione did suffer a lot. But guess what? She doesn't bring that back later in the books because she learned the lesson of the time turner. Because you can't burden yourself with this much. That's why I have a limitation on my time turner. Time turner is to make you realize <laughs> that. It, 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 can you? Yes, Sorry. cause damage. It's literally a it's a teaching device to make you realize value the time you have, value how much time you have on this earth. Not on how not talk, don't focus too much on your regrets. Stop looking back, start moving forward. Now with your invisibility cloak, yours has pretty much no consequences involved because if you can't be seen, what what does what matters? What do, who cares about your actions if no one We're knows? It's all it's about you. having fun if what we want in real life. You're talking about something that, to in the end, caused more damage than anything possible. Causing maybe more of free, or even worse. Imagine it end up in certain people I won't mention on this stream hand. It could cause more damage. But it's, it's, it's invisibly it's all about having fun. If what people want, what they want to have fun, they want to relax. Invisibly close. Imagine yeah. your girlfriend or boyfriend. Uh, Either way, that making out without being caught by your hand. And right reading there. at night, just be able to read. And you can do the same thing with the time turner, especially with this quarantine. I did mention the time turner can be used during this quarantine. You can reverse time to go back to learning more languages, do a pick up a new skill that you always wanted to try out, or with a book. Yeah, but not only can you read this book again, but you can also go back in time to read it again over and over and over again. To say you can't have fun with the time turner. Is ignoring sure there's damage, but at the same time, it's a teaching device and time. Woo, right on it. Wow, okay. 
This got more heated than I thought. All right. That's what we like here at the Nerd Fights, to get some nerds fighting, and they did. <clears throat> all right. We got that invisibility cloak versus that time turner. We've heard all pros and cons about both. So now we got to wrap up this case and plead it. Um, and I think we're starting with Chris. We started with Ryan, so we're going to Chris. I can barely keep track anymore. You guys were duking it out so hard. All right, Mr. Diaz, you're going to get your 60 when you start. I don't use my one minute in session. All right, you're going to get that two minutes then um, with your extension as soon as you begin, sir. Okay. So, Razor the Vehicle, yes, it's a car, Tom. Damn it, at the same time, to bring so much fun in your life. You should do so much with it. Think I'll read a movie. Red stuff that you should not rent because your parents tell, don't tell you to. You do so much with it. That's what you want in real life. You want something that to bring you joy to real life. Time turn is as seen in the Harry Potter series, in the book, in the play. It's a car, 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 it's a nuclear destruction to happen in one hand. And it to damage your mind to call you on the spinning screen. Nobody would want that. They want something to bring you fun. It was something that, yes, it start out good, but to ruin you in the long run. Why are you limitation it? Add that in the play. And I, I wrote paraphrase right here. It, even in five minutes, it's a car damage. And we don't want that. We want something fun, something that to make us feel comfortable. Like blink around our shoulder. Have fun with your girlfriend. Fun family, everything in life that hold dear to our life, family. And like and you to pass it down to children to children like the principal but it did pass it to his son when he passed so his son to have the same thing. That's what we want in real life. In the book, that was the only thing Harry cat and he passed it down to his sons. So that is what I want in real life. I want something that to have for generation to generations. So my fun son to have fun. So my daughter to have fun. So I need to have fun and be themselves. Well, heavy is that rule. Well, at everything to make them feel safe in life and fun in life. Is that what would we want for children, or do we want to damage their mind? Everything with her money, everything with the dignity, with the tournament, with the time trader. Like, yeah. Ryan, you're suggesting that Hitler would fall into the wrong head. So I don't All right, that's that. your time, Chris. That's your time. Okay. Whew. All right, Mr. Payne, you're going to bring that with your closing when you're ready. I'm also going to use my mini extension. All right, so you're going to bring that two minutes when you're ready, sir. The invisibility cloak, while yes, you talked about it's something it can be passed down to generations, but here's the thing with the invisibility cloak that while yeah, Harry Potter did pass it down to his son, but if you brought the invisibility cloak into real life, you did exactly the things you wanted to do without being seen, your mind can slowly be warped into believing that your actions no longer have consequence because no one knows it's you. And no offense that there are plenty of movies we have examples of when someone's invisible, if they can't be seen or judged from what they do, they start doing worse things. But you know what? That could have been brought up later. I'm going to move forward. The invisibility cloak, as you talked about, is that it cannot be trusted in the right, in the wrong hands or even in the right hands because no action, if there's no consequences to your actions, guess what? You have no responsibility. The time turner, as I brought up, the reason why I put a limitation on it. In the movies, we saw Hermione only rewind enough time back to where she can go to classes or go back days. That's why I said five days. Because, no offense, you cannot go back years with the limitation that I had set down. And I had said consistently, my device, the time turner, is meant to be a teachable tool. It's meant for you to realize the value of the time you have while you have it. And especially during our times, the relevant times that we have with these isolations and this quarantine, if there's some, if there's things you want to learn, if there's skills that you want to be able to pick up now, guess what? You can use this time turner to take advantage of that. So when you do, so hopefully when things lift up, you'll be more 
uh, you'll have more tools uh, at your disposal. You'll have more resources on hand to be to want to be able to go out in the world and to live your life the best way you can. You talk about the plays, and yes, the plays talk about all the damage it's done. That's because the time timer had no limits in those plays. It had no limits in the books either. And with Hermione, she learned her lesson after using that time turner. In the plays, it was clear it was mess upon mess upon mess. That is why I made it crucial. There's always a limitation. You need limitations in order to move forward. And your time. <clears throat> your limitation is your time. All right. Wow. Mm. Okay, I'm going to start with me on this one. And uh, both these were excellent picks. And both the gentlemen did a very good job of pointing out uh, the uh, – the pros of theirs and the cons of the other one. And then Ryan in the closing hit me with something nice because I wasn't seeing a lot of limitations or negative attributes to the invisibility cloak until he brought up. If no one can see your actions or then you I mean, par paraphrasing basically that if your actions don't have consequences, if nobody can see them, you believe what you're doing doesn't have those consequences if they're negative things. And that, to me, really kind of struck home, um, that you can learn lessons of how to use the time turner, but that invisibility cloak is a real, real temptation into a darker, darker, uh, um, you know, evil world, possibly. So I'm going to give my points to Ryan. All right. Uh, Madi, what say you, sir? Who's getting your point and why? I'm kind of in the same boat. Uh, it really was right down the middle for me. And then Ryan in your closing, when you said Hermione learned from uh, her time with the time turner really kind of pushed it over. Cause we don't really see anyone really struggling with the, the, the potential negatives of the invisibility cloak in the movies or the books really. Uh, but having someone learn that there is a negative side to magic and that you have to make sure you're using it responsibly uh, and bringing that up in the argument as well was kind of what brought it over. Cause Let's be real. We need more people who are responsible these days. Uh, and I think that Ryan really sold the idea of learning responsibility while also having fun uh, and being uh, a good student of whatever books and languages you're learning uh, with the time turner. All right. That's two points for Ryan. So Ryan gets this point. Okay, uh, JB3, I'm real interested to hear your uh, your point of view. So uh, what were you going to do? Man, Space Man, I'm telling you, man, we must have just had summertime madness or something because it is hot. It is, you can feel the heat. Uh, this was another argument. Uh, it was a little bit more on one side for me. Uh, I was kind of, it, it's funny because typically when you think of time travel, uh, you think, like for me, I think of Back to the Future, and then you got the whole Sports Almanac thing. But in this argument and debate, it got turned around really, really good because the time the time travel was what you were learning from, and it was the invisibility cloak. Again, that, that closing, that was such a great point. If you don't, if you can't, if no one can see what you're doing, you know, and there's no consequences for your actions, then you start to believe that. That was a really, 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 really crucial point to put in there. And that right there uh, got Ryan the point. All right. So a clean sweep for Ryan. Yeah, that uh, coming from the conscious thing at the end really helped him out. Um, all right. But very good arguments uh, from Chris as well. Now, 42 it's scoreboard, we've got, we've got two for Ryan, one for Chris. So with this one. We're either going to go to the speed round or Ryan's going to take it. All right. So we're going to go to someplace we don't go to a lot here in Nerd Fights, which I really appreciate. We've been to the Wizarding World plenty of times, Doctor Who a number of times, and the Disney Animated, of course. But now we're going to independent comics, comics that I love. A lot of the com my favorite comics from back in the day were independent ones. So we're going to go to the world of Valiant. So... To our competitors here, which Valiant comic series would you turn into an HBO Max miniseries? HBO Max is getting a lot of stuff. 
a lot of um, you know trying to get people to subscribe to them. So uh, let's add a little something else to it. Sweeten the deal. Which Valiant comic series would you turn into an HBO Max miniseries? All right, we're gonna start with Chris. That last battle got me so confused, but here we go. Chris, your time starts. Which Valiant comic series you gonna ship to us? What we got? So we're gonna come to Valiant. I am not too familiar with Valiant. I would just admit it. And I went looking, and I stumbled across something called Archer and Armstrong, which is about Archer, who is a kid who raised by a parent in a cult to believe that the demon town he had to, to kill. And the parent, um, trying to molest the cult leader, tree. and when he go confront this guy, this really bad dude that lived a thousand years named Armstrong, he realized that he is the good guy, that he needed to join with him to battle his parents better the cult cost that has stayed as well. And when I think of it, I think of two things. I think uh, one of the best TV directors out there that should get more rated, Brian Fuller, who gave us Hannibal, would use, use the gore and storytelling in best way. And I picked two actors. I picked Hugh Jackman and Armstrong, where I think where his sense of Logan and his sense of human well in other movies, like Greatest Showman and a bunch of other stuff, and Tom Holland. And Archer, with the pen played by Bruce Campbell and Lyndon and later Headley. And it to be the epic adventure, like in the style of Doom Patrol, like in, with a little bit of natural tragedy. You got this asshole that to make anybody follow did the command of the person made it natural. Then make it the interesting thing that's fit for HBO Max. They need the next Doom Patrol. They need something that the most. All right. <laughs> There's your time. All right, interesting choice, and pitch us everything, even actors to do it. <clears throat> All right, Mr. Payne, I uh, hope your snack is done. <laughs> if you are prepared, your time begins with you two. Like my opponent, I'm a little vague, familiar with Valiant, but I have read a couple of single issues. So my character I chose is the character of Divinity. Divinity is a character that has only a three trade issue series, and it's all about this cosmonaut in the era during the space race of the Cold War, where he and two other of his fellow cosmonauts were sent into space to search the unknown, to discover what is out there. He and his he and his pilots came across this waste, this not this waste, but this cosmos area to where not only was it walkable, it could support life, but the one thing that was quite, but the moment they removed their helmets. Especially the main cosmonaut, who his name is in Russian, I can't pronounce. Uh, he ends up breathing in this tox, this gaseous food, to where all of a sudden he's able to have unlimited power, not to the point where he is almost seen as a god. And so, what the first thing he does, he goes back to Earth because it turns out while he was a cosmonaut, he had himself a secret wife and child. So by the time he gets back to Earth, and here's the tragedy of his story, it's he's too late. His, his wife and daughter have already grown old and they're now dead in the grave. And he spends one moment of his time trying to, in his own little paradise, to recreate his wife and daughter. And it's because of his presence, because he's able to create life out of nothing. And the fact that people are drawn to him in a cult-like status is where the outside world starts getting notice of him. But then throughout the entire story, you start to realize he grapples with being ethical, but also having this ability of God. All right, that's your time. That's your time. All right. <clears throat> Interesting choices here. A couple of books. I read a couple issues of each, so I'm really interested to hear how they flesh these out in your five-minute debate round. Okay. Gentlemen, put on the gloves, and whoever starts talking, your time begins then. So, Ryan, when we see HBO Max, we think they need their next thing that to rival something like Marvel does with this show, like, like the Netflix series. And also Armstrong, yeah, it had some disturbing material to it. It's mm -hmm. something that just stands in the way Doom Patrol does, the way that the boy does on Amazon, the way that the Umbrella Academy does on Netflix. Right? They do use dark material, but yet made fun. But you have the talent of uh, Tom Holland, Hugh Jackman, who would have who would make great pairing together with the back and forth. You have interesting villain with Bruce Campbell, with Lita Headley. The Bruce Cameron villain was a bit very unusual for him. But you had the the comedy with the back and forth banter. You had 
the softness that I did with the satchel that to make anybody follow the command. But you all it sound like you're just taking the character Dr. Manhattan from Watchmen, but they both sound a little this, similar to each other. It. And that is how yeah. you can get audiences there because of the similarities. But at the same time, Divinity is still different because the fact is that like Dr. Manhattan, Dr. Manhattan was all about nihilism and how he was all scientific. But Divinity, we also got that with Preacher. Like it, a but, very similar show in a way. <laughs> but here's the difference as I was saying. The, the thing was that you can have your gore, you can have like your uh, vulgar shows, but the thing with Divinity, it can be something different. It can be in a very adult drama, like most shows, like Deadwood, like The Leftovers, even like Watchmen itself. You can still balance. But you have to have people. like a interesting character. Yeah, he interesting that character. Yeah, he had like he character character. character. He is a cosmonaut yeah. who, during his time of country in the well, Cold War, done before. <laughs> Yes. Preacher, wait, 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 wait. No, no, it was not done. The preacher was different. Cosmonaut, he, this is a, he is more of a guy except from his time. He had a secret wife that he had to hide from his government because it was all about commitment to your country. And as I said, the tragedy of his character is the moment he gets this power and goes back, he he even like everything it. is gone. Can I talk, please? Yeah. Can I talk? The moment he gets back, everything is gone. And so he tries to spend what any normal person would have done with this power, get back what you have lost. But the thing is, without his with his story, he has to realize he can't get back what he lost. And it also involves with him having to deal with the different governments of the world, them telling him you can't do this, or you can, or some try to manipulate or try to seduce him. And with Divinity himself, he is a smart man, he's not an idiot. He is a person who realizes that all he wants is just his family. It's simple. And what HBO Max can do great is great character stories. Like, as I mentioned, with the, Dead same, the Leftovers, Watchmen. But you go right ahead. But the same thing with my two. But they want, like, and you to make it like Indiana Jones because it's like them traveling to different parts of the city, trying to start to set the hell bent of bringing the end of Earth with, mm -hmm. with parents that are time molesting parent which we've seen before the show, but interesting. You just read a dark material but had the edgy humor. But I say Brian Fuller, it's fantastic. Some of the stuff you're talking about with Archer and Armstrong feels like it's bits and pieces of Agents of Shield, the Runaways, and Cloak and Dagger. Well, you're that's what HBO looking for, for right? Their next show that to bring people into it. That what they want. Well F Doom Patrol. Very like dark material but with lightheartedness and that what they want. Out. It, it's a 100% an adult show. This is the levity is that the people just say F everything and just roll with it. That's no, the they're like honestness. Like, they're like, you get the little humor with. Oh, God. You get the little humor with Robotic Man by Brendan Fraser. You get the little humor with. The, the levity is like, it, But you and get, like, you thing. get, and you get ridiculous stuff like the cop roast and the rat making out at the end of the season one finale. Like, we've seen the patrol bring little levity to humor. Like, it's the thing that Archer Archer. We're getting out of subject here, and I want to talk more about Divinity. Divinity itself, the ball, it's a three trade issue, means you don't have this, doesn't need to be a long show. This can be an eight or a 10, a 10 episode run where you talk with but Divinity. Arc, and then right also you can deal with this arc with this other fellow cosmonauts because they themselves gain this power. One of them comes back to fight Divinity to say, You betrayed the mission, and then the third one changes, rewrites reality to where Russia wins the Cold War, where everything. So, with this show, like I said with the miniseries, you can do the so first I'm half being about Divinity and his struggle, and then the next half can be about him realizing that the world has been rewritten by one of his fellow cosmonauts, mm -hmm. and he has to convince them, not through a fight, but through moral well, but, ethics, uh, why this is a bad thing. You can't change the time. All right, gentlemen, that's your time. Woo! Man, we're going to have to put more, more fights with y'all, too. This is fun. All right. We heard some pretty compelling uh, arguments about uh, these shows, what the shows would be like, uh, and then how original they would be. So uh, we're going to hear the closing here, the closing kind of pitches here. We're going to start with Mr. Payne. Mr. Payne, sell us that final on your show. All right? Your time begins when you do. 
I may have been a little late in pitching the show, but I'm mainly just trying to get the idea out why this show, Divinity, this character is great for HBO. Because HBO does great character drama. It does great adult drama to where it can touch everyone in the audience from young to old. And well, my opponent pitched big names to start to this. The one thing that's great about HBO is that it can take actors and elevate them to megastar status, like with the actor of uh, Eula Ab- I'm forgetting his name, the one who plays Dr. Manhattan. Yeah, like Regina King. She was moderate, but then she gets high, she gets elevated because of a show like Watchmen. You can do the same thing and take unknown actors or actors with middling TV careers and put them on this show. And with also, it's you it, it can do a great job with its budget. It can do one or two episodes of them in the cosmos space. And then guess what? As I said, of a period piece, it takes in the 50s of cosmonaut Russia and because reality has been written, it can also take advantage of costume designs, of using languages, means you can get more people and actors. And, and that's your time, sir. All right. Okay, Mr. Diaz. Now, tell us on yours. You got your 60. Before I go, when I want to see Mayan Gajab just for a fun question. <laughs> All right. You're very chivalrous. Yeah. Now, sell us your show, brother. Sell us your show. Your time begins when you do. So Ryan made a good point, and I want to say, yes, good name, but you want something that HBO Max, they're looking for the next Daredevil, the next, the next Punish, right? What Marvel did with Netflix. They're looking for the next Doom Patrol. They're looking for ne- the next Umbrella Academy. But Archer Entra, it admits to everything. You had a dark material, but you had levity with Archer Entra banner back and forth. You got the Indiana Jones adventure. You also got stuff like that he, that Archer wanted to just go, who might be related to him, but he realized he's not a developed uh, romantic and feeling for it, like forbidden love. Your arm trying to live down year old and a villain that become a mummy at one point. There's so much idea that's a rough face to a man. And we had Brian Fuller, who does so well with idea like Hannibal, and do a very small budget, and to do gore and humor, and great character studying when you look at the way he studied with his dancing and the way he let Hannibal let this so Just take it at the arch and him dealing with the fact that his parents are killers, and the and the indecision when he went to kill a parent. Now, the fact that he had a power to control people, but even though. And time. <laughs> and that's your time. Woo! All right. Hey, Ryan, good now job. Now we've heard these. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you, you both did well, but we're going to see how well you did with our judges. All right, we're going to go back to Madik. All right, sir. Oh, boy. What's that, you? Uh, first of all, I'm really surprised that nobody mentioned Ninja K in this Valiant argument, but that's I can talk about that. <laughs> that, that, that. That's just my personal <laughs> thing. Um, sure was the universe, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll be honest; I didn't know who Divinity was until you brought him up, and I did do a little bit of googling uh, during the match just because I wanted to know at least something of like the backstory, just kind of see where you were coming from. Uh, I am a little bit more aware of uh, Chris's pick, but of Archer and Armstrong. Uh, and just based on what you guys told me, uh, I was a little bit, I was hearing a lot more from Ryan's side about his story, about what would bring intrigue to it and the time periods uh, because he goes in space and then there's time warping realities where he shifts it to the cold war and stuff like that. And that like, as someone who had no idea what the story was, it really intrigued me and wanted me to know more. Uh, the fact that there is only three issues does worry me a little bit because I'm not sure how they can make a full miniseries with just three, three issues or three trades. Sorry, sorry. Uh, so I'm a little curious as to what they would do. Uh, but just based on the way you were describing the character and uh, this kind of stuff that he has to go through and uh, like having that kind of power, it's, it's it, it was really intriguing to me. And uh, for that reason, I went with uh, with Ryan's pick. All right, so that's one point for Ryan. All right, Mr. JB. Love Mark Green. Armstrong, though. Like I said. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, I was just, you, I was through. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it was another nice debate. Uh, I don't know anything about this comic. So I came in blind. Uh, I was just, you know, learning from what they told me. And Chris did bring up, you know, a lot of good points like he, he's been doing, but Ryan 
just did more. So many uh, – the limited edition thing can, was a plus for me. I think that um, it, that would be perfect because it could be just a mini series and then it could be done. Mm. Um, and then – but the unlimited power and, you know, the creating life and, and talking about, like, uh, the like, wa- like Watchmen, like, that, that reminded me so much – you know, like I think that there was someone. He just painted such a better, a better picture for me with that. Uh, I don't really have anything negative to say about uh, Chris's argument or his, you know, his path that he chose. Uh, it was just Ryan's was just a little bit more like colorful for me, so I had to go for Ryan. All right, and with that, oh wow, know, there you go. That's a pretty good your... too. Winner! Yeah, this is the first trade. This is the first trade issue. <laughs> I love it. I mean, these are beautiful, and I'm very yeah. glad that you have them. But That's wonderful artwork, too. You take it away from your from your victory chant. <laughs> and your winner, Mr. Ryan Payne. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Whew. Chris, that was a good battle. That was a compelling argument. Uh, but just uh, Ryan, very good with the character drama. Much like with the Doctor of Who pitch, uh, he brought in that character drama and I really think uh, intrigued a lot of people, uh, obviously the judges, with that and painted a nice picture in a show that I would definitely uh, would definitely want to see. Um, Chris had some inspired casting, uh, but I think Ryan pitched just a little bit with the, uh, with the script and with the storyline uh, and as compelling as it was. So your winner, Mr. Payne. All right, Mr. Payne, you've won. You've won a debate here. In TMG, a nerd fight, the one you didn't want to even be in. And here you are, standing victorious. What do you got to say for yourself, sir? It's amazing how I've done this debate and throughout nerd fights, I never even did any sort of subtle reference, which is a, a surprise with me, which is why I'm going to have to cut that streak to reference a show of Supernatural of a character who pretty much goes, oh, if I lose, then guess what? My points prove if I win, so I win. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, but no, I look, it was whatever as as before. I figured with late TV fights and choke slam, I try so hard and get so far, and in the end, it just didn't matter. So now I figured with nerd fights, maybe if I just took this nonchalant attitude and tried to debate with it, but it was clear with the person you gave me. That attitude flew out of the ring very fast, especially <laughs> when question two came around. Like, I was trying to be all chillax, be about the points. But then guess what? You bring in Doctor Who, and I'm just like, <laughs> what? <laughs> so, Chris, congratulations, man. I mean, yes, you, you, you may not have won, but you definitely, definitely woke me up. You made me break my Lon Harris character for five minutes just to – debate with you and i applaud you for that and believe me if we ever wa- if we ever come across each other again in our debate for life, i'm gonna make sure i have half or five pages of notes ready prepared to fight you nice all right and with that though there's a lot of people out there we're in a whole new world with nerd fights right now so is there anybody you got one win against mr diaz is there anybody out there that you're looking to tackle you're looking to battle not really no i mean to be honest the, the fact of nerd fights it's the randomness i can come across anybody who's as passionate who is just as dangerous who can paint better pictures or can bring up better points i just know that if i still want to remain calm and relax find that part between rage and serenity i'm gonna to have to keep doing my research and keep with the lawn harris delinquent attitude it's all good nothing matters <laughs> all right so we'll see which mr Payne comes to the next battle round with uh, the next nerd competitor all right but um definitely gonna fight on another day um is uh, mr diaz mr diaz you fought hard you had you painted a lot of good pictures yourself today sir uh, how you feeling about this battle overall i never a tough battle when it comes to dr who and valiant like i i Love Doctor Who. I'm not too familiar with Valen. I'm hoping to find a competition near me, so I just don't be out of comment more. 
But yeah, it did a fun one. Like I came in all I can with Harry Potter and Doctor Who because I love both. And it just did question. And I hoping with my more encouragement I get better and better at this. And I looking forward to playing again sometime soon. Getting a two and one a one win, hopefully soon. <laughs> All right. Well, I, I see that in your future because, yes, sir, you do get better and better each go around. Win or lose, you're still a champion in my book and to all the nerds out there. All right. So this was a lot of fun. Um, Madi, you were there through thick and through thin, through all of it. Uh, did you have a hard time judging these? What, what did you think about these battles today? Uh, I'll tell you what. The hardest part was dealing with your evil trash can comments. But <laughs> the the... <laughs> The quality of these debates, man, is something else. Like, the, both of you guys came out with, like, swinging right and left, and it was just really hard fought. And like me and JB3 and Mr. Spichemin, uh sorry, Dr. Spichemin, I don't want to disrespect, uh, were saying throughout, like, you guys were really bringing it. Like, it was just, like, one or two points that you guys said that swung us either way. Um, and... I'll, I'll say it. You guys really brought it. Like, I don't understand how else I can say it, but uh, really, really strong arguments. And now I'm also intrigued to uh, read some divinity comics uh, if I can get a hand on them during this quarantine. But yeah, th this has been, this has been a lot of fun. All right. Well, I'm sure all Ryan got to do is stick them in a trash can somewhere. They'll magically appear. I'm, I'm kidding. I'm playing. I don't, I don't want to mess with the trash cans no more. I, I, I will. Never disrespect the We already had one again. war. Uh, we had one war already. We don't need another one. Not right we now. We don't need another one. Busy. Not now. All right. Uh, you gave a whole new respect to him for me. Okay. Mr. JB3, you were with us too. Um, what did you think about all this? Well, first off, I just want to say, Ryan, well, congratulations. But uh, you did not uh, break character. Uh, mm -hmm. if, if I don't mean to bust anybody's uh, chops, Ryan, for your sake, but <laughs> you are being the Cassidy Mark himself. You are being, uh, you know, Mr. I don't try. And whenever Mr. Freshly Squeezed is in the ring and he starts with that attitude, when he gets hit and gets that moment, he snaps and he destroys and he, and he locks in that mousetrap for the one, two, three. And you know what? That's exactly what you did today. Uh, you got hit with that first round, and it was like, it was like, you, you, it's like your sunglasses got knocked off your face, and you just snapped. Uh, so congratulations, you did great, Chris. You know, you didn't. There was not nothing bad about your debating. Uh, I just think, you know, sometimes, you know, sometimes debaters just perform, you know, at another level. It doesn't necessarily take away from the other debater. Uh, it just means that. Uh, you know, someone was just more on point for the day. I want to see both of you go at it again. Chris, I want to see you more often, mm -hmm. uh, definitely. And, uh, yeah, it was a great match. And thank you for having me on. It was, uh, it was a lot of fun. All right. Agreed, agreed. It was definitely a good match. And uh, JB3 showing a little managerial skills there, doing a little inspiration for us. I like that. Preach, brother, preach. Um, <laughs> yes. Hallelujah, sir. All right. I want to thank my judges uh, for being here tonight. I want to thank... Chris, I want to thank Mr. Payne and everybody watching at home. And always remember, anytime you're into something nerdy, be it a movie, a TV show, a book, anything at all, make sure you're taking notes and pushing up those glasses because you never know. When you get in the ring, you're being a nerd, you're going to have to fight. All right, aloha, everyone. Take care.